My name is James Lawrence and I'm the Director of the Australia-China Relations Institute at UTS. So I'm an economist, so um, I, I, you know, I started looking at domestic consumption patterns in China, then moved into the study of the financial system, measuring productivity um, across Chinese provinces, uh, macroeconomic issues, so the drivers of Chinese economic growth and business cycle fluctuations in China. Um, and since I've moved to the Australia-China Relations Institute, it's very much been focused on, on trade and investment issues. Uh, everyone knows that China is by far Australia's most significant trading partner. The Australia-China Relations Institute, we host um, a lot of visiting scholars and particularly PhD students. Um, and we've missed them the last few years because of the COVID pandemic. We've had a very uh, quiet, empty office, but I'm very excited this year, uh, those, many of those students have started coming back. When I, so I grew up in Brisbane in the 1970s, and um, I can assure you there wasn't a lot of contact with Chinese people, Chinese customs, Chinese, Chinese culture um, back in Brisbane during that decade. Look, I think it started at high school. I guess that's where a lot of Australian kids start mixing with a broader group. Um, so of course I had one or two friends of, of Chinese heritage, but not a lot. Um, funnily enough, it was really my study. Um, I enjoyed economics at high school and I look back to what I was writing about in my grade 12 high school economics assignment, and it was the Chinese economy, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is a bit strange in a sense, but that was just what grabbed my attention. And then that um, really continued into my university days as well. So the combination of China and the economy, um, it started back in high school and it continues right now until 2022. Since my wife is from China, so that inevitably means that I have some exposure there. But even before then, um, I was regularly traveling to China. I mean, my first trip to China, I think, was in 1994. Um, you know, it developed obviously lots of great Chinese friends over the years. Australia and China had a relationship long before then. I mean, the first Chinese migrant, if I remember correctly, arrived in Australia in 1818. So this is, this is nearly 100 years before Australia actually became a federated country. And of course it was um, you know, nearly 150 years before the formation of the People's Republic of, of China, which, we, which we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of um, diplomatic ties with this year. And now we have um, 1.3 million Australians of Chinese um, heritage. That's out of a population of 24 million. Um, of course, our trade numbers, you know, again, despite some challenges in recent years, last year, Australia's exports to China and imports from China both hit record highs. Um, this year, trade continues to be robust. So look, it's, it's a great, uh, it, it's an important time to reflect um, on those political relationships, but let's also not forget that um, a lot happens outside. Probably a final comment, you know, over the last 50 years, there's been ups and downs, right, it, between um, the relations between Beijing and Canberra. But, um, you know, I, I do think right where we are now that both Canberra and Beijing recognise that, you know, fundamentally, this is a good relationship for both sides. Um, so the best thing governments can do is um, uh, keep things stable and, and allow the rest of the relationship, those people-to-people -people ties, those business links to flourish.